exit C2 of Samsi Police Station, which is where all the used electronics market is happening. More by the Golden Computer Arcade is where they sell clothes, and you'll see women buying clothes. But over here is more of a, how do you say, a cockfest? <laughs> Men shopping for electronics and goods we are sort of interested in. So uh, I'm personally going to come out here and explore. This is where I found very interesting deals in the past. So uh, I hope Mayu finds a couple things interesting here, at least so I don't lose her attention. Wow, look at these. They're... Uh, Pretty antique things and pretty good souvenirs. These cost about 20 Hong Kong dollars. You're not really breaking the bank for something that's authentic instead of some mass produced type of souvenir that you get. They also seem to have used DVDs and bags. Musical instruments and bands. Wow, this is so interesting to me. Who are you? Oh, old school counterfeit games. <laughs> Back from the 80s or something. It looks like they have old watches and knickknacks. We got some old DVDs. Oh, and more watches. Look at all that. Uh oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Trade secrets being discussed over there. And uh, ooh, look, fishing rods. That one's for Andy. Andy loves fishing. Wow, is this interesting to you, Mayu? A little bit more interesting than a bunch of computers, right? And video games. You want to get a cheap what? Oh wow, look, Chinese CDs. I wish I still had a CD player, but... <laughs> Seems like the, the old timers that come out here still do. And... All right, this is the back. I'm going to cut it off here. So Mayu's obsession with Hong Kong taxis and buses continues. We find for the same price in this store taxis and buses that are like 10 times as large as the Tomiko ones that she was getting for her nephews. And I personally think these would be better gifts for little kids who don't really understand the collectability of Tomica cars. Alright, so I've made executive decision and advised Mayu to get the nephew a SWAT car. No pansy taxis and buses. <laughs> so not everything is counterfeit. If you search enough, otakus like us can find little gems like box sets of the original Hunter x Hunter. So Mayu is getting a real kick out of how they're selling everything just <laughs> in heaps. Well, that's quite nice. Maybe even if it doesn't work, it's like a good uh, <laughs> uh, prop to act like we're taking vintage photos and stuff. <laughs> taking photos of us taking photos, guys. That's the new Instagram thing. And uh, wow, look, they got more stuff here. Actually, uh, what? Hold on. Am I seeing power tools? <gasps> I'm seeing power tools. Check that out. Oh my god. Look at that. A sawzall. You got your drills. Oh. I just uh, had my testosterone level go up. Gosh, people love fishing out here. People love power drills, power cords, power everything. Ooh, sawzaws. They got table saws. Different kinds of utility scissors. More power. And these are like good brands too. Bosch, Makita. Those, those, uh, we pretty much buy those brands so that uh, we can use them forever because they're reliable so 
Even if they're used, I, I'd still buy that over, eh, per se, like a Roby or whatever, like that we used to get at Home Depot for quick jobs here and there. Oh, okay. Tons of uh, remotes in case you've misplaced them. And uh, more fishing stuff. I see pretty much a constant theme here. If you're into fishing, if you're into home improvement, this is where you want to be at some sweet po. Although I'd have to double check on the wattages and I noticed that the cables are like the three prongs. So even if the wattage is correct and the voltage is correct, uh, you're gonna want to get one of those adapters, which actually don't really cost much and they sell them everywhere around here for like a dollar or two US dollar equivalent. This is made in Japan too. Yeah, all Sony Walkmans, guys, look at what we found. An old school Walkman, a cassette Walkman too. Not a poser, CD Walkman. I think I've seen like these sell for like a lot of money on eBay and such because it's hard to play your old cassettes now. They don't really make them. Guys, check it out. They got a bunch of these uh, used Victorianoff Swiss Army knives. They're roughly about $2.80. That's sort of a steal because these things become dirty and used anyways. Alright guys, check this out. I picked myself up a used uh, Katmandu mini nail clipper slash scissors utility knife for two and a half dollars. Actually, this, this is quite useful because I need nail clippers and such. I pretty much save the most crowded for last. This particular area has the most amount of people. Uh, I see used cameras right here. I see LED light strips. Mayu is checking out antique coins. Oh, that's like a full dollar or half dollar. I see not antique stuff, but phone cases. And what's going on here? Oh, like flashlights for your head. Oh, I need to come back here. I was actually looking for one of those S-Links. I got a couple of them last time and I and I lose them all the time because I use them so frequently and everywhere that I tend to just lose them. And okay, power strips, power strips, SIM cards. What's interesting to know is it seems like they have the phone numbers listed. So similar culture to Thailand where certain phone numbers have certain like lucky meanings or unlucky meanings. So that's why they have all these phone numbers that they have available listed on there for you. Okay. Let's see, what else is here? Oh, okay, security cameras. I see them everywhere, but I don't know. I'm just a little iffy about buying security and CCTV cameras from China because I keep hearing that they have chips and such in them that can't be 100% sure is very safe. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I don't know. Okay, bags. So this place has less antiques, but it definitely seems to be full of little knickknacks and such that you may need. Let's say you lose a remote to your air conditioning unit, or you lose a remote to your TV and you've always wanted to upgrade. <laughs> uh, here it is, here it is. Instead of having to walk into your TV and turn it on, etc. You can get it from here. Alright. Oh, look, 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 guys. More used cameras and camcorders. Power tools. I, I see, I see tons of these um, power tools everywhere. Watches. Although I'm, I'm a little iffy about the new ones. I think they're probably counterfeit. But the old ones definitely seem legit. Like legit old school Casios. If you're into that kind of stuff, uh, there's a bunch of them out here. Old school uh, Casio watches I've seen. Um, oh my god, guys. There's just more. There's more. Look at this. 
more, 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 more. I will say uh, where I got my TV mount was in one of these stores on the left-hand side. I shopped around between a bunch of them, and I got a really, really good deal. And I can never forget that shopping experience because after I picked up my TV mount here, I, I walked with that really, really heavy, like solid steel TV mount all the way to Tim Ho Wan. <laughs> And I was smiling the whole way, even though it was super heavy, because I, I picked up a really great deal. So, yeah, there's always something for everyone out here, I think. Let's check it out. We found a store that specializes in magnets. <laughs> uh, I guess you can hot glue it and then make different things stick on your fridge and such. I never thought about that. But they have them in all sizes and shapes. Don't, don't touch me. <laughs> So uh, basically the concept around here is you touch you buy. <laughs> Don't be touching things by you. Alright guys, I found it. The area that's the mother of all link stores. I love these S links and D links. I mean obviously I wouldn't trust my weight with it. But I do trust like my $50, you know, tripod stand and such to uh, such cheap links. But they, they've, they've served me well, none of them have really broken on me and my whole gear carrying system is based around these links so I wanted to get more. Alright guys, I don't know, maybe it's the orange shirt I'm wearing today or something but they're taking me for a sucker right now and trying to overcharge me for those S-Biners and D-Links. So I'm not gonna get it. I was all really hyped up to get it but honestly, they're selling like the same things that you'll see on Amazon but they're selling it for almost twice the price which I really can't accept it. Um, so, you know, if I have like a viewer or someone coming out from America, I'll probably just uh, see if they can do me a favor and bring me one of those D-Links and I'll just like ship it to them with Amazon or something like that. I, it's only like $2 or $3 on Amazon, but they are wanting anywhere from three and a half to maybe even like $5, which is a total ripoff. Guys, I found the mount store that I got my mount from last time. It's this exact mount. It's still the same price. It's about $30. So cool because you got like the thing to hide the cables behind and it pulls out and also swivels left, right, as well as up and down. So, <laughs> so I, I mean, I don't know what it is, but the mounts here are super cheap. It's basically right out the exit over there. I believe that's A2. And you keep walking by this area where the s binders are over there. And it's this store called Sun Fung. But there's uh, other areas here that sell the TV mounts. But I think I found them to be the cheapest. Alright guys, I'm at exit D2 of the Samsui Po station. This is the major intersection here that all the major electronic plazas are going to be located around. And right over there is a golden computer arcade known for cheap electronic parts to make your computers with. Uh, another thing I really want to mention on the side note is that here in Hong Kong, a lot of people <laughs> smoke and I don't know why they place a smoking area right in front of a subway station. <laughs> Mayu has been complaining about that quite a bit. It's sort of getting on my nerves too. Oh by the way, as you can see, the original reason I came out here to uh, Golden Computer Arcade was not because I'm looking to build a computer because I'm not a computer guy, but they have your video games here, they got all sorts of other computer gaming peripherals, etc. Including ability to modify and hack your consoles, which uh, if you're interested in that, they could do that here too. I mean, they basically have everything here. All right guys, so there are tons of game shops around here, but this one caught my eye. It's called Gold Game Shop. This man here custom makes these uh, arcade cabinet Nah, it's not a cabinet, but basically what it is is has both joysticks and loads up a bunch of games that you can play on there. Uh, the lower end version is about 170 US dollars. The higher end version is about 210. 
And how many games did you say you have in this again? 1,000 games. 1,000 games. And then this one has like 1,500, right? And it has a better motherboard. Um, I'm checking out the controls. Uh, he, he's, he's straight up honest with you. It's not Sanwa or anything, but I've had Sanwa joysticks. I've bought fight sticks for about $120, $30 that just come with only half of it. And this, this feels exactly just as good. It's very clickety. It's a four gate system, so it's Japanese based, not the octagons like the ones that we're used to in American. But man, for that price, it's amazing. 170. I, I used to buy like just half of this for 140 so I can have a little bit of an advantage on Street Fighter or Tekken, but he gives you all of this plus a thousand, thousand five hundred games. Man, I would, I would love this so much. It looks like they have what looks like, you know, the new Neo Geo systems. Uh, you can load up your own games on an SD card and play it on here and even output it with AV. And it's about, I guess it's around 50 US dollars, 350 Hong Kong dollars. By the way, I forgot to mention that this outputs with HDMI. So all you need to do is get this, load it to the TV with HDMI, and you're good to go to play all your retro old school arcade games. You also got bigger standalone arcade systems. I, I can't really introduce everything, but this is a more advanced motherboard. You can play up to Tekken 6 on there. <laughs> I'm so tempted to get it. <laughs> so as a general rule of thumb, uh, the last time I came out here shopping for stuff, I can tell you like the new games are about the same price as Thailand, which is actually slightly cheaper than America because you don't have to pay sales tax on top of the prices they list. But as far as um, used game prices, because they have an availability of used games out here just like uh, in the States, you're gonna be able to find uh, better deals than Thailand on used games. So that, that was the thing that I got out of it, but this time around I'm noticing a lot of these modified arcade systems. That wasn't the only place, that was only the first place I came to. This one even has a custom face, Street Fighter. It comes loaded with games too, and it's even cheaper. 1,180. So you can definitely come out here and shop around. I don't consider iOS gamers gamers, but they got love for iOS gamers too. <laughs> oh man, guys, I, got, I, I love this cabinet, look. You can be all 007 playing this game. Nothing like flashy, high definition K-pop to display how good the resolution is on a computer monitor. Guys, you can literally find anything and everything related to computers out here. It's like even better than Fry's Electronics back in the States. If you, if you want to terminate your own Ethernet cable, and do Cat 6 or Bridge or whatever, you, you can get that out here too. <laughs> Look at old school Tekken Tag Tournament. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll be Mayu with one hand. Oh no! Mayu's mad because I beat him in the first round. Oh my gosh, got him in my face. You got head to head arcade over here. I swear to god, there was a time when I was about to buy like a used Japanese style penny arcade cabinet and make my own system out of computer parts. In America. They do all this for you here. So I guess Thailand's popular for Hong Kong people too. They're introducing Emporium right now in Prompo. Hong Kong people want to come to Thailand and I want to come to Hong Kong. So they even have like handheld versions. I mean, you can, I think you can play Game Boy games. That's 158. Well, that's like about the price of one meal out here for both of us, right babe? So we walked through the first floor of Golden Arcade. Mayu is what? Mommy's waffles. Okay babe, you can go. This is a little treat that Mayu gets because she was like, Boy, when are we going? When are we going? When are we going? Uh, you could tell she wasn't that interested. <laughs> This is, uh, this is where uh, geeks like us come to build computers, such like that. But honestly, if you're coming from the States, uh, when I did the price comparisons for like the things that I know the prices of, such as Western Digital Hard Drives, some computers and laptops, I don't think the prices are that much cheaper than America. As a matter of fact, on Black Friday or any kind of sale, there is no place that is going to give you a better price on consumer electronics than in America.
but it's just pretty interesting to come out here and see like the retro arcade scene and all those custom made arcade cabinets and such. That's really taken off here it looks like as well. So if you're interested you can come out here and check it out. Uh, <laughs> I also had a very interesting conversation with one of the guys there and he was talking about how Soldier Boy or something was selling uh, pirated games and such on his website and uh, he's, he's got into trouble for that. So if you're coming from the States, yeah, definitely be careful with all that stuff. I'm not 100% sure about the copyright laws. It looks like they're using really, really old school retro arcade kind of games, which I know, you know, a lot of people have been downloading on their computers and using like the MAME arcade systems etc but you know what have you out here he's like I asked, I'm pretty sure there are copyright laws but when I when I was talking to this guy he's like well out here there's pretty much no copyright laws so that was quite interesting to hear um, doesn't really seem like the government is cracking down on it out here anytime soon later my is trying to play with this little cat here in the middle of all the toys I think uh, <laughs> this is like uh, the street of counterfeit toys. <gasps> Ooh, they have board games. Look. I'm gonna go check it out. It looks like maybe Chinese counterfeit toys. This board game guy has both English and Chinese versions of these games. I'm gonna pick up this Odyssey expansion. It's multilingual. It's only 45 so it's like $8 or something. I already have the original Dixit over there, so I just need these expansions. Um, he's explaining to me that those are Chinese over there and they're, they're cheaper. Aww. He tempted to pick up Settlers of Catan. $12, $15, I, I don't know, it's 99 Hong Kong dollars. But yeah, I have way too many board games already. I'm just, I'm just buying an expansion for an existing one, guys. Because this one actually is quite good for teaching English as it, it's like a game where you sort of guess who use different kinds of um, pictures and uh, you have to s describe it where it's not too obvious and you have to also describe it where it's not like too vague so that at least one person can guess it in the group. It it's been a really great like uh, English icebreaker exercise so I'm saying I'm buying it for work. A uh, subject of great icebreaker games if you're teaching English. This game Spotted, really good for younger kids. And code names, really great for more advanced students. It's actually, as soon as we made a left, we're noticing a bunch of toys. <laughs> Particularly these uh, Lepin uh, fake Lego toys. We're gonna go ahead and check it out. I checked out the prices and these Legos are gonna be about 400 Hong Kong dollars. Uh, for that one, and this one's slightly cheaper at 380 I don't think they're really any cheaper than what you can get them on Lazada or Shopee, which are like the Amazons that we use in Thailand if you really wanted them, but, you know, for the novelty of it, I, if you're from the States and you're out here, I guess you can get one of those if you're willing to risk having pieces malfunction and such but uh, we got one that was a lot smaller than that for about what was it like 20 30 dollars and uh, we made it it was a mini cooper and there was nothing wrong with it so <laughs> I, I don't know but the technic ones are a bit more um, advanced I don't know oh my gosh there is a uh... okay this is Japan <laughs> Humorous man, tough man. You got the man with a pros uh, personality. You got okay. So these are about eight dollars each. You got Vladimir Putin, Shinzo Abe, Trump, and uh, uh, what's his name? Xi Jinping. We've gone so sidetracked. My is wandering into the maze of shopping that I don't think we can make it even to Timowan. Lipstick. So it's like a girl said, let me guess, it's for Sawachan, right? Sawachan, so I want to be a princess. <laughs> for $5, okay. I was just about to shoot me walking really fast and say, okay, we're not going to get distracted, squirrel, we're not going to get... And then Mai's like, babe, 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 and then she's in here. What do you want now, babe? 
Like telling Mayu, hey, get out of there. I think it might be counterfeit. And then Mayu is saying that's that's really not counterfeit. So, yeah, I don't know. Guys, uh, I don't uh, encourage buying of counterfeit, but out here, the lines between counterfeit and authentic are blurred. <laughs> I was like, I got here first somehow. I don't know how Mayu found it. Whoa, you found the red. I How'd you find it? I was looking around the, the, this street and uh -huh. then I see a lot of Gundam shops uh -huh. and they all look so authentic, right? Uh -huh. And I went to walk past one shop. I, I see that they have a Tommy gun. Yeah, 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 shell. yeah, yeah. yeah. very, um, yeah, yeah. signature shell. <gasps> I found it. I was like, they might have it. And I said, babe, and when you're walking worse to the 59, it's not that expensive either. Oh, four dollar more. But oh, they have all colors, but they don't have a box. Okay, okay, now we gotta exchange that red one for the green one and you'll have the complete set. It's been five years and now one of us is changed. Mayu made a keen observation that the reason they have this over the towels is because there's a ton of pigeons up there and it's trying to protect the towels from the poo poo. Hong Kong ingenuity at work here, they have guys. One there. They have a two over there. Yeah, I never noticed that. There. Wow. Alright. Ready to go. Alright guys, so for those of you staying in Jordan Street area, 821 or 21 is gonna be caught from a little distance from the intersection right there. See that building? That's where we're staying. So it's a little further down but super close. Most of the signage is up there. The airport bus, the signage is a little different. So be look out on that. It's called City Flyer. And, uh, we figured out the confusion between why the N21 is cheaper than A21. A21 is what operates during the daytime and it's more expensive. N21 on the other hand does the exact same thing but starts from midnight and it's like 10 Hong Kong dollars cheaper. Maybe it's because they don't have to hit traffic so the costs are lower. If you're on a budget be very mindful of this pro tip as it's gonna save you a ton of money as it only costs 33 Hong Kong dollars for the A21 bus and 20 something for the N21 as opposed to a hundred for the airport express. The difference is a whole meal at a Michelin star restaurant like Tim O'Wan. Alright guys, so we're at the Hong Kong International Airport. But well, apparently you're supposed to be at Terminal 2. You guys should be mindful of which terminal you're supposed to be at so you're not making the same mistake like we did. Alright guys, one thing I do have to say is that this might be the most complicated airport that we've been to. Not only are there multiple international departure terminals, but there are multiple trams you have to take with multiple stops. You really gotta know where you're getting on and off. Can't be vlogging and doing this at the same time if it wasn't for Mayu navigating. Bite and Bite Line Friends Restaurant has possibly the most disturbing image I've ever seen in a cartoon so far. Look at, look at this guy. Moon is eating french fries and Sally there is being put into a hamburger. Cause Sally's a chicken, you get it? And it's just like, ooh, look at, look at this, look at this face, horrified. And he's winking and enjoying eating, so is brown. And, and, and uh, Sally's twin is uh, cooking Sally up in this, <laughs> this is so was in between the bun like a pate what oh my gosh this place also serves bear meat more animals being served up on burgers i'm about to turn vegan off of this i don't want to know what the secret sauce is it's probably brown <laughs> cooking up sally's brains up into a little yolk Oh yeah it is, you see Sally's up there? Secret sauce is Sally, babe. What are you doing, Mayu? Mayu's tagging up brown. Aw, <laughs> oh, time to erase it. 
<laughs> He's all clean. Oh, they even seem to sell like knockoffs at the airport. It is a folding deformation drone. <laughs> Mayu's interest has been piqued. We found Tamika full set. If you guys are lazy, you can just pick up the whole set, unlike shopping for it like we did, and just pay 99. Basically, twice the price for each. So I swear to God, they always, always switch the gates on us. <laughs> Cute flight attendants. Yeah, this is why we fly Air Asia. Over your nose and mouth with the headband. Should an oxygen mask like this? <laughs> they got this at 7 Eleven to save some money. Total fail. I don't know how to do this. Yourself the other day, Onigiri Master. <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna salvage it. <laughs> All right. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <Masita>. <laughs> Not bad. Thank you so much for checking out this video and if you're interested in more content about what our life's been like since moving to Asia, we release two videos weekly, longer neighborhood guides on Wednesdays and our regular travel and Bangkok vlogs on Saturdays. We hope you set that bell notification and see you guys next week for more vlogs about living and traveling in Asia.